Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. Today we're going to discuss chemotherapy induced neutropenic fever. I have the pleasure of being with Dr. Cynthia Rivera, Assistant Professor of Infectious Disease at the University of Miami. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Dr. Rivera, would you please explain to our patients what are neutrophils, first of all? Okay, so neutrophils are white blood cells. Um, they are actually what we like to think of as the first line of defense in, in fighting infections. And they, they usually are responding to bacterial infections. So when we, when we uh, usually uh, need our neutrophils is when we're having a bacterial infection such as a pneumonia or uh, any sort of infection in our skin or in our blood. Uh, they are part of what we call the innate immune system, which is the immune system that is activated right away when there is any signs of infection in the body. So they're extremely important in fighting infections early. I see. So what does neutropenic fever mean, and how is that different from a regular fever? Okay, so neutropenic fever, uh, you know, we, we joke around in infectious disease that that's a bit of a misnomer because mm -hmm. fevers are either high or they're low. They really, they really aren't neutropenic. Mm -hmm. But we, we use that term when uh, people have fevers uh, and when their neutrophil count in the blood is less than 500. Uh, some people say less than 1,000, but we tend to say of the blood cells, those neutrophils are less than 500 in the blood, and you have a fever, we, we categorize you as neutropenic fever. I see. So for our patients at home who have a thermometer, would you please define what a fever is? What is a temperature? What? Okay, so uh, for those of you who use Celsius, a fever is anything above 38 <coughs> degrees Celsius. Uh, in Fahrenheit, that translates to 100.4 degrees. I see, okay. And so how serious is neutropenic fever? Okay, well, I guess that, you know, neutropenic fever is such a broad term that uh, how serious it is really depends on what type of cancer you have, how long uh, you have had your cells low, uh, and what type of chemotherapy you're receiving. So, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, with all of the chemotherapies available, we see some neutropenic fevers that don't last very long, uh, patients with solid organ tumors, and we see patients receiving uh, stem cell transplants or very long courses of chemotherapy for acute myelogenous leukemia, for example. Those patients, uh, usually when they have neutropenic fever, uh, we tend to think of them as more serious. Uh, so it really depends on the disease as well as the chemotherapy. I see. So let's take the first example you talked about. Let's say someone has breast cancer okay. and they're getting chemotherapy every three weeks. Okay. Would you please explain how the neutropenic cycle works? Okay, so depending on, on what type of uh, chemotherapy this patient is going to be receiving for breast cancer, usually uh, what happens is that uh, the white blood cells will start to slowly decline after the chemotherapy. Uh, it really depends on the chemotherapeutic agent, but there are certain days, sometimes it's day 7, sometimes it's day 10, when you will have a trough or a nadir, as the, as the hematologist oncologists like to call it, in the white blood cells. And it's that point where the patients are most vulnerable uh, to get fevers uh, from their, either from the neutropenia itself or from an infection. Mm -hmm. And when do the white blood cells tend to recover during that cycle? Again, that depends on the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some white blood cells will recover within a matter of days. As you mentioned, solid organ tumors, yeah. that's usually the case. Um, there are some times when we actually need the white blood cells to be low for a longer period of time in order to fight the cancer. And uh, those are more cases of, of blood cancers like leukemia mm -hmm. and lymphoma. I see. So. Would you please explain what mucositis is and how does that relate to neutropenic fever? Okay, so mucositis is, is really just referring to inflammation. Um, it could be anywhere in the gastrointestinal tract, but we see it in the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, there are some chemotherapy agents that really irritate the lining of the mouth and you can see ulcerations uh, in the mouth and discomfort. I see. Well, obviously, mucositis, if it it's in the mouth, it can be anywhere in the GI tract. Absolutely. So if someone has diarrhea, they most likely have mucositis. Absolutely. So how can the bacteria get in and cause infection if someone has mucositis? Okay. Well, you know, the lining of our gastrointestinal tract has a lot of... Uh, it, it is many layers of cells that are there to protect us against all of the bacteria that line our entire gastrointestinal tract. So obviously that is a line of defense against infection and when you break down that line of defense, 
uh, you, that is when our neutrophils usually come in. And when both lines of defense are broken, that's when we tend to see problems with infections. I see. So what can patients do at home to prevent an infection if they are neutropenic? Okay, well, when we do have, you know, what's, what is really important is dependent on the cycle of chemotherapy. Your hematologist, oncologist will know when you are most vulnerable to infection. There are many protocols, depending on the chemotherapy, for giving antibiotics uh, in order to prevent infection. But there are also a lot of things that you could do at home always washing your hands, as the patient always washing your hands, family members making sure to uh, use hand hygiene, um, certain things like making sure not to uh, have fresh uh, flowers and plants in the home, uh, avoiding um, any sort of fruits or vegetables that can't be peeled, mm -hmm. any, any raw fruits or vegetables. Um, <coughs> thing, things like that. Uh, in addition, uh, any family members who are either sick um, or have received any live vaccines, particularly for our stem cell uh, transplant patients after a, a leukemia, we recommend that you, that you refrain from visiting patients at that time. I see. So. What if the patient has a porter cath? How does that relate to fever if you're neutropenic? Okay. Well, here's a bit of a catch-22 because usually the, the types of things that we usually associate with infection are, are brought on by neutrophils. And when we don't have neutrophils, it's hard for us to know whether infections are, are present. However, if you do see any sort of redness or uh, discomfort around your porta cath, that is really, it's really important at that point to alert your, your doctor to this. Um, on the same, along the same lines, if you do have a fever, it's important for us to uh, check your porta cath for any signs of infection, usually with, with blood cultures. I see. So let's say a patient has had chemotherapy and a few days later they develop fever at home. What should they do? Okay, so anyone who has had chemotherapy and develops a fever, uh, most of the time with your doctor, you and your doctor have discussed uh, exactly when you are most vulnerable. But I would say anyone who has had chemotherapy and develops a fever at home should come in to be Thank seen and, and should make sure that the white blood cells are functioning and at an appropriate level and be evaluated by a physician for any signs of infection. What if it's at night and they don't want to bother their doctor and wait it out till the next morning? Do you recommend that? I recommend they bother their... their well, it, it depends. If, if they are feeling ill in any way, I would say come into the emergency yeah, room. Exactly. If uh, they are not feeling ill and they have good access to uh, their, their physician uh, on, on an after-hours basis, yeah. then they could contact their physician for further medical advice. Excellent. So, Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.